could go over the case study and I could create a graphic organizer to get them to sort of synthesize their thoughts around it. Um, and we could structure it like a CER because that's what we've already done with them in, in our science classes. Um, and then I know you had said that you wanted them to do sort of like a group CER as well. So we could use, um, they, you know, the students could go through this together and make sure they understand it and all those kinds of things and then independently create a CER and that would be their, um, their like whatever tool or whatever to bring into the Socratic seminar. So they already kind of have an idea of how they're thinking about these concepts. And then um, after participating in the Socratic seminar and hearing each other's ideas, then they could go back together as a group and um, create the poster CER that um, you had said previously wanted them to do with a kind of a new understanding after kind of working out all those ideas. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that sounds really good. Okay, so um, my graphic organizer that I, I would create for them would include um, the CER, so they have to come up with claim evidence reasoning, and then um, I usually do it like questions. So, I in terms of the learning objective, I think the the task that you just brought up was the Socratic seminar okay. and the CER poster. Um, the content is that the students will connect um, the rise of antibiotic resistance and bacteria to evolution and natural selection. Okay. Um, and then the language piece is going to be a little bit different for each because our language objective for the Socratic seminar is that they're able to verbally articulate their understanding so, and also discuss, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas their poster objective really more is including the um, evidence piece. And being able to pull it from the case study. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so it should probably be two different objectives. And then we could break down our success skills. Um, you know what, the success skills could probably be the same then because it's going to be the same class period. So yeah. you can say we have two different objectives and their success skills are taking them from the first objective to the second objective. Right. And okay. just starting simple with like, I can explain evolution and then okay. go from there. Yeah, perfect. wanted to remind you that it's a conversation, so if you still have questions about this topic, that's what this time is for. Um, I've also had a lot of students ask me why we're doing a Socratic seminar in science, which hurts my English teacher heart, <laughs> but I want you to know that it, uh, why, why we're doing it. So you tell me, why do you think a group of scientists would get together and have a conversation about a topic? Gabe? To brainstorm ideas and talk about the topic. Nice, excellent. So to brainstorm ideas. What kind of drugs are you talking about? Good. Louder. What are antibiotics? Yeah. What do you mean by what kind of antibiotics are things that you put in your body that kill uh, cells that don't have a nucleus? And sometimes it'll kill bacteria that helps you and harms you. And through that, some infections can come from this. Okay. One example of antibiotic is penicillin that was used in the 1960s, then now it's useless because the bacteria is more Anti uh, Antibiotic protected millions of lives, whatever nature is antibiotic. Um, every, every year antibiotic do not get viruses, so uh, was not antibiotic. We need new ways to find antibiotics. After Socratic seminar, students return to their biology class to apply their learning and understanding. Students work in collaborative groups to complete their CER poster that includes their claim, evidence, and reasoning. Teachers circulate the room to provide support for all students. 
primary language is used to deepen comprehension and understanding of the content. Que las bacterias evolucionan a los antibióticos que nosotros les lanzamos. Entonces, entre más resistentes son las bacterias, más antibióticos necesitamos. Por ejemplo, en el pasado utilizamos penicilina para resolver el Right, so that they what his policy of flux will respond to yes. like during these events. Right. Okay. So we'll need to start with something where we can sort of um, introduce the context of how mm -hmm. Kennedy, you know, became involved in, you know, I guess the prominent issue is the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay. So we'll want to uh, we'll want to find a way to like uh, introduce the context of that, which I think can be partially um, this. I want to adapt it from this lesson plan. And okay. so they have some recommended video mm -hmm. resources that we can use to introduce the Cuban kind Missile build Crisis. build background on it. Yeah. So build why we got to the Cuban Missile Crisis right. from other events in that historical period. Right. Okay. Um, not as much covered is... I really want to break down flex the term flexible response okay. and have make sure that they sort of understand the concept of flexibility in the sense of policy making, like how not just... Like how it's being used other than flexibility and like, oh, I can touch my toes, but what right. flexibility means in this historical context right. as well. Right, right. Um, so could we do something with like a slide using images and other options to kind of portray the idea of flexibility? Yes. And then um, flexible is a cognate from right. Spanish. Okay. So our Spanish learners will be able to do that. Okay. Um, and be able to connect that a little bit better um, but we could also put like other words that are similar to what we actually want them to mean for yeah. flexible, right? Like, well, um, yeah, go ahead. Like right. other words like adaptable or like different options that sure. Kennedy had during the time period. Yeah. I think we can also have them come up with examples and okay. not examples of flexibility so that they can, and, and you know, share and brainstorm that as a group. Okay. Um, to really we round out that idea. Samples to get them like on the way yeah. to do that? Yeah, okay. I think so. Um, and then that way they understand it like in a historical context, but also right? like they can situate it better. As yeah, well. right. Okay. So right. two two ways of understanding flexible response before they apply that right. knowledge to yeah. how Kennedy interpreted flexible response yeah, as well. Exactly. Okay. So I think maybe we kind of start with the context, just you and I, like debriefing okay. it a little bit for them. So debriefing like Bay of Pigs and yeah. how com how uh, Cuba became to be a communist country and why that's a threat to the United States. Yeah. As well, like, um, like the proximity between Cuba and right um, and the United States and how that nuclear issue is yeah. part of the. Well, I also think to set them up to be able to make the comparison, mm -hmm. we should sort of address, like, firstly address what we've learned thus far. Okay. Right? So that they can, you know, like, you know, Activate access their prior, prior learning. Long, right. Yeah. And then, and then, um, and then kind of fill in the context. Okay. So we could use some of the um, stuff that we've used as images in previous slide decks yeah. to kind of refer back to that and that learning that they've done previously. And we'll have them have the cells so they can Yeah, and so they can look back at this and look at their knowledge and then they can talk about some of the stuff that they did right. um, with their group. So they're bouncing off ideas from each other, just building up that schema that they have right. um, in order to go into the next part of the lesson. Yes. Okay. So, and then we'll address this maybe through just a brief lecture. Okay. And then, I, like I said, I have a video, some video resources to talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis, okay. which I think maybe just different like learning modalities might be right. able to like see it. Okay. And then, you know, hear it from us, but then see it. Okay. Can um, we put the closed captioning on the video as well yeah. so English learners have text to follow along with as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good idea. Um, from there, um, I think what I would like to do is to um, have them, after they've watched the video and we've like really hashed out what a flexible response means, mm -hmm. I think I, I have a reading. There's a couple readings in this resource. Okay. I don't think that... response okay that's going to be your claim you're going to say do you think that he does demonstrate a flexible response or he does not demonstrate a flexible response okay all right talk about it with the people around you mm -hmm. 
la razón por qué esta carta es que se Straight a flexible response because this letter have stow words like showing confident words such as great care, welcome to the statement and quickly. Uh, this show flexibility because Kennedy cares about people feeling It's awesome Good job. I taught middle school in Barrio Logan for six years before coming here and so that's what I did for all that that time was teach a ton of English learners um, by myself and I always said that the hardest thing was meeting the needs of all students because there would be high students in those classes there's at least 60% English learners in those classes and it's so hard um, so my advice would be to just find help somewhere yeah. just find a mentor go to pd like you can't do it in isolation it just doesn't work <laughs> um well this is something i'm really passionate about because right now well i'm just always a passionate person but um right now the science department is like officially adopt adopting the ngss um for next year and there's like a group of um, science teachers planning and I was like why isn't there also in that planning group um, a representative from EL and a representative from SPED who can think about all the things that you guys don't have time to like I don't think it's fair to ask content teachers to think of all of the many many different um, perspectives in regards to what students need and even like higher level kids too because we di we diversify our content constantly for we have really really high kids in the class too so when you have that many different needs in a classroom it's so hard to think of all of those things and that's kind of what we ask of our teachers so for me what I would suggest is that I mean ideally <laughs> As a department, it would be um, let's come together and plan some lessons collaboratively and potentially if there is some specialist on campus, even if it's just one, they could be a part of those meetings with the content teachers and say, oh, here's some things I'm noticing or here's some questions I have, here's some things I'm thinking that then you're really hitting more than just one classroom that way. Um, you're kind of infecting the entire um, department with um, concepts that would be more beneficial for English language learners and also for special education teachers as well. Um, or even gifted learners like right so you if if you were able to get a group of specialists in a room with content teachers and say like okay we're gonna hash out this unit I mean that would be